You're having a hard time killing Galerius, and you're here for help. Well, don't worry. The Platts got you. Now, we're going to go into the best strategies that I found to beat this character, and um, basically how I think you, you, know, you should tackle this fight. I have two different teams. Now, we're not going to go through each and every single unit on the team and do every single gambit this isn't a copy paste idea but we will look at them we will give you the idea because the chances that you have the exact stats and the initiative you're gonna have to do some moving around and maneuvering stuff based off what you basically have in your playthrough but the idea will be able to be easily implemented regardless so what two teams but really quick boom thank you to my members thank you to the supporters for supporting the plat Thanks to all these uh, people that have been supporting me and subscribing. I've been getting a lot of uh, places reaching out, asking for me to cover this, that, or the other thing. Um, and I've said pretty much no, but there is hopefully something coming out soon. That'll be awesome. But let's jump into the point of the video, Galerius here. So I've got two teams. As you can see here, this team is going to one round this enemy team. You know, boom, 948 damage out of 946. Almost exactly, though not quite, but almost. And then my second team here is a completely different team uh, with some similar ideas, but they are going to two round him. It's going to take him a second round to do it. But let's jump into exactly what the team is here. This one is probably more powerful, but it's a little more specific as you need Rosalinda to my knowledge. The most important ability in this fight for this team is the Rage of Fairies. This activates at the start of battle. Attack a row of enemies with magic with a magical first strike that inflicts stun. It grants you summon fairies. That's not too important. But this team has one identity. This team does one thing. It stuns and it inflicts damage over time. So we have pretty much everything set up here, right? We even gave her a silver trident, trident which is a relatively early, maybe mid-game item. I don't quite remember. Um, but it's 2 AP and it inflicts stun. Um, this only does it if they're not so like, in fact, I wonder if I turn this off, if that makes the fight better, it doesn't change anything. Um, maybe if I do boom, primus edge, right? Does that going to change anything? We do even more damage now. Okay. So we even made it better. So the idea is here, we're going to have this on a lot of our attacks, right? We're going to have our attack that stuns and have them set up to activate only when the enemy is not stunned and then have nothing else. You're just going to sit there and stand by same with this here, right? Lightning blade. This is a level... 19 elven fencer right lightning blade inflict stunned only do it when they're not stunned well how plat how are we going to deal any damage we're not doing any damage we got some of the best units in the game right here we got the warlock warlock has a built-in thunderous strike which will activate when they're not stunned however we already have a lot of redundancy in this not stun thing so what they're really here for is two reasons fireball we want them to um throw fireball to start inflicting burn on the target and flame conferral, which is going to help our other characters use put burn on the character too. Um, in fact, you could probably even are uh, I think you could probably use an owl and have it target this guy so you get more flame conferral stacks, but I'm not gonna mess with the team at this point. You know, it, it's doing its job. So they're basically anytime anyone attacks, we don't care who. Add it's a physical attack, add burn to it. We just want to get the burn stacks on there. And then when they're not stunned, you could do this. And then I have this set up to just get more stacks of fire because it is pretty important. Um, but also he has it set up, you know, so it, it works. As far as the gear, I haven't even looked at some of the gear. I really only care about the Silver Triton getting AP and PP. This one is just enough initiative so he can go when I want him to go. This character is just get all the, you know, you want four PP. And then we have the... Uh, druid here, Shaman Druid. <clears throat> they're basically here for their Poison Curse. They're not even using Curse Swap, or they're not even going to use one of their passive points. It's not necessary. Uh, poison Curse and Compounding Curse will just, I think that makes the, it makes debuffs. I don't actually know if this works with Poison, if I'm being honest. If this doesn't, you could just add a character that attacks and inflicts Poison. You don't probably need this. The only thing she has is the Poison Hex Staff and the right level of initiative to go in the turn order that I want. And then, yeah, she does do the Defensive Curse, which doesn't matter for this team. It's really just here for the Poison. There's lots of things that can inflict Poison. Um, I'd like Compounding Curse, because when it said debuffs, I was including Fire and 
uh, poison, but I actually don't think this works now that I, if I remember the playback, because I tested these fights first. And then finally, we have a Thunderbrand Tome on a second war, uh, Warlock doing basically the exact same thing as the first, right? If they're not stunned, you stun them. If they're otherwise, you just fireball them. This one, I think they just end up fireballing them. I don't quite remember the turn order on this one. But then you're going to use your PP to help inflict stun when they're not stunned. We'll take a look and see if this is activating randomly or only when the enemy is not stunned. Um, just using overall powerful stuff, trying to get that PP. That is this team. So we'll show you how each team goes through, and then we'll switch the idea up here. But the reason why this team works, if, if you turn this off, Rage of Fairies, take a look at this. We, we do no damage, right? Literally, we take 1,200 damage. That's how important this ability is. Because what this does is before he goes, as long as you have higher initiative, you stun him before he activates his giant shield. Because one of the very first things he's going to do, when literally the first thing he's going to do, at the start of battle, completely negate up to six hits. That is a lot of hits. And so, but if you stun him and you prevent him from ever using that, he never gets the shield. And then you stack a bunch of fire and poison on him. And then every turn he's stunned, he's incapitated, but he will still take debuff damage. He will take the, take the fire damage. He'll take the poison damage. And then we're not really doing that much damage. We're basically letting the dots kill him because he has so much HP and he's going to be stunned for so long that we're basically never going to give him a turn. So I've already saved this. Um, we'll go ahead and show this fight first and then we will reload and we will show you the other team in the other fight. So maybe I'll even do a timestamp. Who knows? But let's take a look at this fight. So... And again, this isn't specifically about the, the gambits and the team itself. The This elven lady is important for this team. But I have another team that includes just generic units or units that you can get regardless if you don't have her. That way you have an idea. So Rage of Fairies, most important. Boom, one damage. He's stunned. You're just going to stand there. You're going to fireball. Burn level one. We don't even care about the damage. We just care about the poison and the burn. They're poisoned. You're going to stand by. It's, a, it's not a fast fight. It's not a fast fight, but it is a good fight. Oh, so he unstunned because this guy's slow. He's not going to cast any fireballs, but you're going to get that extra stun in there, which is probably good. This elf is just up here. Doing his thing. Compounding curse. Does this actually work? I don't know, but I'm hoping it does. We got a fairy. The poison's doing 85. I don't know if that's what it was doing before. But the burn is definitely not doing any more damage. So lightning blade, boom. He guarded, but it doesn't matter. You're still stunned. You're just going to do burn level four. And now we're pretty much out of AP. We're just sitting here like this, right? He's incapitated. And now we're going to lightning blade. I guess we're going to do flame conferral too. Unless we not, haven't done that many attacks. You can see we're actually not even using the lightning conferral, which is kind of funny because all of our stuff is set up to stun. Except for this one, I guess. There we go. And so that one actually would have already have done it. So we didn't even have to do it, but it's all right. There we go. Look at that. Just He's just incapitated. He has full AP, full PP. Boom. And he dies to the burn. And the poison, all right? That's that's what that team's identity is, all right? So let's go ahead and skip to the next one. So the second team here is similar, but much easier to kind of... It, it, it's harder to fine-tune it, but, like, you don't need a specific thing and a specific thing. This is kind of more straightforward. Just kill them through traditional damage. So the only character here... I mean, most of this is actually optional, if I'm being 100% honest. Besides Elaine and the Swordmaster, this is basically what you want. So the only the whole identity of this team is he is going to do his very first hit here, right? He's going to do his thing where he gets the darkness armor and negate up to six hits. However, our character that's going to go first is going to just use Meteor Slash. And Meteor Slash is just going to hit nine times. And that's just going to completely negate the shield and still deal a little bit of damage. Not too much, but a little bit of damage. Now that the shield's down... We're kind of going into a drain tank kind of build. We're going to have a lane come in. Um, I mean, this character is just going to deal damage. That's fine. Um, and then a lane's going to come in and Calvary Slayer him to get his basically drain his AP and PP. Very good ability for this. It does do guard seal, which is a little um, 
annoying, but it's actually, actually, no, 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 this is good because now we have the Elven Fencer. The Elven Fencer comes in with the Lightning Blade to stun him, right? So now he's stunned. Now we can safely inflict the Cavalry Slayer because when you inflict Guard Seal on him, then he like diminishes it and he does like this counter thing, right? So when he's stunned though, he can't do that. So now we're going to drain his AP and his PP um, after he's stunned. And then Amalia is going to come in and she's going to steal some of her AP. And then uh, that's basically what we're going to do. We're just trying to drain all of his juice, drain all of his PP, if you know what I mean. Um, Amalia, I think, is particularly good in this fight because she does have wild kick. So if they do guard an attack, she just gets to come in and stun him. Um, which is very good for only one PP. And if he doesn't guard an attack, then it just doesn't really matter, I suppose, right? Um, and also, then, if we're not using the Lightning Blade, right? The second one is Nature's Wrath, which does negative one PP to Calvary targets. I'm going to go... I, I might put this in the front or the end of the video. I don't know. Over what units I think you should consider using, what are really good. But I wanted to highlight the teams. Um, so... I just am trying to do as much damage as possible, extra critical damage, you know, pump the physical attack as high as you can. It doesn't matter. The Swordmaster is still not doing that much damage. The Swordmaster just kind of hits like a wet noodle. Um, Elaine, however, does do pretty good damage. Calvary Slayer is pretty good, mostly because it just kind of fucks him up. Um, I, you can see I do have the shackles on him. That just, this is like exactly why I wanted it for initiation manipulation. That way, initiative manipulation, I could have it lower if I uh, wanted it to. Um, this guy is here purely for damage, right? He does double damage to um, Calvary, and he's just going to use Diving Thrust again and again. Absolutely smack him. He can't guard against it. 150 potency um, with 99 physical, you know, attack, so it's really good. You don't even need... He doesn't need this Lapis Pendant, by the way. He could easily get rid of this and do anything that gives him more attack. Like, um, I mean, even this, this gives him five more attack, right? Like... We fucked something. Oh, that's because we fucked up the initiative. Don't do it. Don't, don't. This is why you don't mess with shit while you're alive, right? Let's just put on something that gives them some physical attack. Because once you mess with the initiative order, shit's going to get uh, whack. Let's give them uh, four more physical attack. There we go. There we go. There we go. We're back, baby. Um, And then, so, just doing as much damage as they can. Amalia is here to primarily drain... Um, drain, drain, drain. And then if for some reason I actually, cause I haven't gone through each thing, she's going to switch over to heavy slash once he is out of AP. Cause it just does more damage. Um, I think wild kick is pretty good here, but this is the crimson Epe. I'm not, I don't remember where to get this, but active shatter is good, but there's a lot of ways to, you could use a thief, you know, to do active steal. You don't steal all of his active points. I swear to God, I tried it six times. He only takes one AP every time that you do it. I was like, oh, this is awesome. We'll just AP steal the whole guy. He seems to have some sort of immunity to getting it all stolen where you only could take one. Um, and then you're, this is basically very the same as the first time, but even a little bit, we're using this character a bit more here because they want to have Nature's Wrath to drain PP if needed. So let's kind of take a look at this fight. This fight I haven't watched a bunch of times to see exactly how it works, but it was the idea is simple. This idea is you he puts up a big shield, you destroy the shield, and then you just defeat him by trying to drain his AP and PP secondarily, and then deal as much damage as possible thirdly. This is much mu this is more of a tower of like this is a Jenga tower compared to the other one where you just stun. So you gotta make sure you're getting your characters to go in the right order, and you have to twist it a little bit, but you don't need the unique characters, right? Other than a lane, which you're guaranteed to have. If for some reason you don't have the elf, it's not a big deal. Dragon's War is just there because I don't think it actually matters. He's going to Darkness Armor, right? You are going to Meteor Slash. And you actually took all the hits there because he had the, the debuff at the start of the fight. Venom Touch lowers our attack on a character that's already weak, so kind of who cares. You get a Wild Kick, you become Stunned. Diving thrust, let's go. This is probably where most of our damage is coming from, right? 197. You can only do that four times, though, so keep that in mind. PP down. So he's out of PP. And now we have Calvary Slayer. We probably could have min-maxed this, like, a lot more, too. But that that's, like, good. Active Shatter, right? AP down. Meteor Slash. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, you know what? You served your purpose, so thank you. Diving Thrust, another 113 damage. 
Lightning Blade, very, very good. Calvary Slayer. And then we're going to get their final AP here. There we go. So now they're out of AP. We're just diving, thrusting, diving, thrusting, lightning blading. You don't even need to do that anymore, but it's okay. Heavy slash, diving thrust, and then that's going to be where the fight ends. Right here. Still have like a lot of unused PP, as you can see, right? But if you apply, if you apply pressure in the right spots, you don't need to be very strong. Now he's going to heal a bunch after this, but it still is a two round. I didn't check if it would be a two round when I started it, but it's a two round. Um, so those are the teams. Those are the ideas behind them. Stop moving. Um, right. Either you're going to be using a sword master to burst through him and then drain him from his uh, AP and PP, or you're just going to keep him stun locked permanently and do all the um, damage over time, primarily with the rage of fairies, which is the most important. Now, this is kind of a stun lock as well, of course, but it's it's a very different uh, style of team. Even though you're winning in a, a semi-similar way, um, it's obviously all like pretty much all different units. So now, what units do I recommend? Let's go ahead and just uh, load. That way all my guys aren't fighting and shit. So what are some of the classes I really think you should be using if you need some guidance? Like what is good, what is bad? Um some of the highlight classes that are really, really good are obviously the Elemental Augur. The Elemental Augur here. Um, the Rage of Fairies is insanely good. I actually think the Warlock is really, really good here because they ha both have the ability to stun and they have the ability to inflict fire in their same kit, which is very good. And most importantly, they can hold these tomes and the tomes are very, very powerful in general. Um, so I think Warlocks are very, very good. I think Elven Augers are really, really good. Elven Fencers are hugely good for this fight because they have a ability to stun on a one AP and it's pretty decent damage too. I mean, even mine's only like level 20, and it, but so it didn't matter. But this being able to just go every round and just keep them stunned is absolutely broken. Not to mention if you have two Elven Fencers, the second one could just be draining PP the whole time, right? Now, it does magic, so it's probably lower damage, but once you get out of their PP, that's also pretty good. Um, Swordmaster, very, very powerful in this fight as well, mostly just because, yes, they they they, they kind of flip their little wrist around and deal one damage a lot of times, at least mine, even with, like, good shit on and getting crits and stuff. They're just... I Mine's not a high enough level, probably, but they, they are just kind of weak physical attack. But the idea is here, the Meteor Slash is very, very strong. The Meteor Slash will just destroy the shield in front of him. That way you don't need to worry about that. Elaine is obviously strong in every fight in the entire game. However, this is a fight where Calvary Slayer is incredibly good. Because this guy is on a horse. He is Calvary. I mean, we could we could see that visually, but also just go here. He is Calvary. Does double damage to normal things, um, to infantry. Thus making the Wyvern Master also very good. Now, obviously, these are the units I'm using. Are there any units I wasn't using that I was that I would consider? Um, I mean, you don't you don't really care about freeze or guard seal or anything like that. You mostly care about things that can stun. You care about just dealing a bunch of damage. You don't like a lot of units that are good aren't necessarily good in this fight. Like I didn't find Alania that particularly good. Um, things that are just kind of like value engines, I didn't find to be that good. You mostly wanted to cheese this fight. Um, by keeping him stunned. So, you know, actually, Calvary could be good. They're not insane, but they do have Wild Rush, right? So they have the ability to stun. This doesn't do insane damage. I'd rather use the Elven Fencer, probably. Um, but you absolutely, like, maybe just doing, honestly, maybe just having, like, three great knights in the back row. Stun, stun, stun. While they're also using Calvary Call to give yourself more and more and more attack. That might just be literally the most powerful thing and you just have them all wait you have all three of them do wild rush and then you have them all wait until they're stunned i mean that might even be like the most powerful build you know what let's try it out really quick all right so i spent like five minutes here five ten minutes and uh i put together a team here of just kind of exactly what you could expect right great knights using wild rush calvary call get them all for ap4 pp um, have the sword master so they could break the shield. I have a fire slash backup weapon, mostly because I have it. You could probably two round this, but I wanted to one round it for the sake of the video. Um, 
So you're basically going to Meteor Slash and you're going to Fire Slash a couple times, get a couple fire on there, help the damage thing kind of keep going. Um, I do have an Owl here, mostly for the Restore, to give these characters more juice to kind of keep going. Um, I don't even know if you need it, honestly. I don't even know if it works because the AP. It probably does because of the um, active heal. In effect, you could even do uh, whatever. The point is, it doesn't matter too much. Um, and then I actually think night vision is good because um, I missed a couple times when I was testing the fight. But you can see here, we did get to the point where we could run one round it with just a bunch of knights. You know, classic cavalry build. Let's go ahead and take a look how it works. I didn't min max it extreme. Just, you know, once I get to that point, I'm like, this is good enough. But I think the owl's restore is probably not getting used that much. But meteor slash, do your thing, get rid of the shield. Charge impetus. Venom touch, doesn't matter. Front row, don't care. And then we're going to fast forward this one just because it's going to be a long... It's going to be a long one. And so we're there going to do this again and again and again. I wonder how much... If it's going to be mostly the uh, freaking... Also, they didn't even use... They're not even using Restore. I guess the Restore doesn't work if you're trying to use it before... I don't know. Like... Uh, before an attack because it, it hasn't worked on everything it seems like restore maybe is more restrictive than i thought it was but there we go everyone's just waiting right if they're not stunned they're waiting and eventually my characters will die to the poison because we're drawing this fight out as long as we can and then the last character that's going to go is actually our character guy who has the highest physical attack um, but, I mean, this was just kind of like an add-on build, right? Just trying to give you an idea of which characters are good, right? Stun, do a little bit of damage over time. Just keep them stunned. Keep hitting them again and again. And this is a scaling threat. So, I mean, it scales up until you're out of AP and PP. But he's hitting for 45 a hit now, right? And so now, let's see. What is he? This is our strongest one. He's hitting through a 66 through the guard. He even has an extra AP there. 133 crit. I mean... Yeah, he still had another two hits in him, at least. So, as you can see here, like, it's a tough fight. But as once you understand the key weaknesses, which is stun, and then basically stun, and then lots of damage over time, and then you'll be set. Sorry, no spoilers. Um, but, yeah, that's this fight. <laughs> so, really quick before we end the video, uh, spoiler warning, but... Um, in case someone asks, why am I doing this fight and not the actual final fight of the game against Baltro? I just, I found that fight to be super easy. I didn't have to change anything. I mostly just had, I just had a team already that wasn't the team for this fight. They just one shot them, right? It was like nothing. So if that's a fight that you guys are struggling with, let me know. I could do a guide for that one probably. I would have to go and kind of learn the fight because I didn't have to learn it. I just bypassed it. This fight, I really had to learn because it is like, you need to be pretty specific with how your turn orders go. It's definitely a super tough uh, fight, I think. So that's why we did that fight instead of this. But anyway, that's all for today. Much love for platypuses, for platypus. I'll see you on the flip-flops. You guys have a good one. And I appreciate you guys watching my guide content. Peace. Oh, also like and share and subscribe, uh, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to help support the plat, you could either do it financially or you could just share the video around have or watch another video. You know, if you just watch one more video today, that's a huge way to support the plan. If my views got doubled, oh, buddy, we'd be talking. Anyway, see you guys in the flip flop. Bye.